It was a dark and stormy night, and Sarah was sitting in her cramped apartment, staring at her computer screen. She had always dreamed of financial freedom, but it seemed so far out of reach. As she scrolled through social media, she saw an ad for a video promising to teach her how to achieve financial independence. Curious, she clicked the link and began watching. The video spoke directly to her, asking her why she wanted financial freedom and what it meant to her. It was as if the video was reading her mind. Sarah had always been worried about her job security, and the video touched on this topic as well. It was as if the video was speaking directly to her fears, acknowledging her concerns and offering a solution. As the video continued, Sarah was hooked. It answered all of her burning questions, from how to allocate her savings between financial assets to how much she should invest in real estate. But what surprised her the most was when the video talked about love. Love? What did that have to do with financial independence? But as the video explained, investing in love and relationships could have a positive impact on both personal and financial well-being. With each passing minute, Sarah felt more empowered and confident. She was excited to take the next step in her financial journey, armed with the knowledge and advice she had just received. As the video ended, Sarah sat back in her chair, feeling a sense of relief and excitement. She now had a clear path to financial independence, and she couldn't wait to see where it would take her. Chapter 1. Meet Sarah, a hard-working young professional with a decent monthly income. She always believed that as long as she had a job and was able to pay her bills on time, she was on the right track. But one day, a friend introduced her to the idea of financial independence, and everything changed. Sarah couldn't stop thinking about the possibility of being free from the financial worries that constantly weighed her down. She wanted to know more, so she did her research and discovered that financial independence wasn't just a pipe dream. It was something that could be achieved with the right planning, saving, and investing. But as Sarah dug deeper, she realized she had a lot of work to do. Her monthly income was good, but she wasn't saving as much as she could be. And worst of all, she had accumulated a significant amount of debt, including credit card debt and a car loan. Determined to achieve her goal, Sarah got to work. She cut back on her expenses, made a budget, and started saving as much as she could. She tackled her credit card debt first, paying it off in full and committing to only using her card for rewards and insurance. Next, she followed the one-tenth rule for car buying and stopped dreaming about the new car she had been eyeing for months. Instead, she continued driving her reliable, albeit older, car and put the money she would have spent on car payments toward paying off her car loan faster. Sarah also realized that her student loan debt was weighing her down, so she made a plan to pay it off within four years of graduating. And she started thinking about her mortgage, researching the best ways to pay it off sooner and become truly financially independent. With each debt she paid off, Sarah felt a sense of relief and accomplishment. And as she continued to save and invest, her net worth grew. She was on her way to achieving financial independence, something she never thought possible before. Sarah's journey was not easy, but it was worth it. And if she could do it, so can you. Take a moment to think about your own financial situation and ask yourself, are you working toward financial independence? If not, what can you do today to start? Chapter 2. Sophie had always been good with money. Even as a teenager, she had been saving up for a rainy day. Now in her early 30s, she had amassed a tidy sum, but she knew it wasn't enough. She wanted financial independence, and she knew that to achieve it, she needed a plan. She started by reading up on all the different investment options available to her, and that's when she stumbled upon Dogen's allocation models. The financial samurai model caught her eye, but she wasn't sure if she was ready to take such a big risk. She decided to start with the conventional model and see how things went. Sophie started investing in stocks, bonds, and real estate, just like Dogen had recommended. She even set up an emergency fund with some risk-free assets. It wasn't long before she started to see some real returns on her investments. But Sophie was ambitious. She didn't want to wait until she was retired to be financially free. She started to think about what she could do to increase her income. 
she knew she couldn't rely on her day job forever. That's when she remembered something her friend had said about starting a side hustle. Sophie had always been interested in art, and she realized she could turn her passion into a profitable business. She started selling her artwork online, and before she knew it, she had a steady stream of customers. With the extra income from her side hustle, Sophie started to think about buying her own home. She knew it was an important step on the road to financial independence. But she didn't want to overspend. She remembered Dogen's 30 30 thirds rule and decided to stick to it. She found a small apartment in a cheaper part of town and put down a 20% down payment. She knew that was the smart thing to do, especially in case of unexpected difficulties. Sophie was excited to have a place of her own, but she knew there was still more work to be done. Sophie continued to diversify her investments, even adding some alternative investments like cryptocurrencies to her portfolio. She also started to think about investing in real estate beyond her primary residence. She knew it was a great way to build wealth, but she didn't want to make any rash decisions. She decided to apply the 30 30 thirds rule to any future real estate purchases, just like she had with her apartment. Sophie knew that financial independence was within her grasp, and she was determined to make it happen. She was grateful for Dogen's advice and felt confident that she was on the right path. Chapter 3. Mia had always dreamed of a career in the arts, but after graduating from college with a degree in painting, she found herself struggling to make ends meet. Despite working long hours at a local art gallery, Mia's meager salary barely covered her rent and student loan payments. She longed for financial freedom but had no idea how to achieve it. One day, Mia stumbled upon an article that spoke about the importance of investing in your career, and how a well-paid job can lead to financial freedom. She knew that her job at the art gallery was not going to cut it, but she also didn't want to give up her passion for the arts. Determined to make a change, Mia began applying for jobs in the highly competitive art world, but with no luck. She realized that she needed to do something different to stand out. That's when she decided to start her own side hustle. Mia started by creating a series of online painting classes, which she promoted through social media. At first, the response was slow, but as more people discovered her classes, her following began to grow. She spent every spare moment outside of work building her brand and perfecting her lessons, often working well into the night. Despite the long hours and hard work, Mia found that she loved teaching even more than painting. Her students praised her classes, and many even started buying her original artwork. It was then that Mia realized that her side hustle had become more than just a way to make extra money. It had become her passion, and it was starting to pay off. After a few years of working tirelessly on her side hustle, Mia's brand had grown to the point where she was earning more money from her classes and artwork than from her job at the art gallery. She finally had the financial freedom she had been dreaming of, and she was able to quit her day job to focus on her own business full-time. Mia's journey wasn't easy, but it taught her the importance of investing in yourself and finding ways to make your passion work for you. She learned that with hard work and determination, Anyone can achieve financial freedom, no matter what their career path may be. Chapter 4. Sarah had always been a driven person. She had a passion for learning and a deep desire to succeed. As she entered her early 20s, she knew that education would be the key to achieving her dreams. She worked hard and was accepted to a prestigious university, determined to make the most of her opportunity. But as she dove into her studies, Sarah found herself struggling. The pressure of the competitive environment was overwhelming, and she felt like she was constantly falling behind. Her grades began to slip, and she started to feel like she wasn't cut out for this world of high achievers. It was at this point that Sarah met Jack. He was kind and supportive, and he had a way of making her feel like everything would be okay. They started dating, and Sarah found herself falling deeply in love. As their relationship grew, Jack began to encourage Sarah to take a step back and reevaluate her priorities. He reminded her that education was important, but it wasn't everything. He urged her to find a balance between her studies and her personal life. Sarah was torn. She had always been told that education was the key to success, but she couldn't deny the happiness that she felt when she was with Jack. 
she began to wonder if she was making the right choices. As graduation approached, Sarah was faced with a difficult decision. Should she continue on the path that she had always envisioned for herself, or should she take a chance on love? She knew that either choice would have consequences, and she was afraid of making the wrong one. In the end, Sarah chose love. She graduated with a degree from her prestigious university, but instead of pursuing a high-powered career, she chose to start a business with Jack. They worked hard and were eventually able to build a successful company together. Looking back on her life, Sarah realized that education had indeed been important, but it was love that had given her the strength to succeed. She knew that she had made the right choice, and she was grateful for the support and guidance that Jack had given her along the way. Summary As the sun began to set on the city, Rachel sat at her desk, staring at the computer screen in front of her. She had been scrolling through articles on financial independence for hours, trying to figure out where to start. As a recent college graduate, she felt overwhelmed by the prospect of paying off her student loans, finding a job, and making a plan for her future. Just as she was about to give up, a particular article caught her eye. It was a final summary of everything she had been reading, and it promised to give her actionable advice on how to become financially independent. Intrigued, Rachel began to read. The article was straightforward and gave her four main takeaways. Identify her why, pay down her debts, follow the rules for buying a car and a house, and make room for love. But it was the extra bit of advice that really caught her attention, the 70-30th's philosophy of decision-making. Rachel had always struggled with making decisions. She was a perfectionist, and the thought of making the wrong choice terrified her. But the 70-30th's philosophy offered her a new perspective, a way to think in terms of probability rather than binary absolutes. It meant that she could take a chance on something with a 70% chance of success, knowing that she would still learn from any mistakes. With newfound motivation, Rachel made a plan. She identified her why to pay off her student loans and become financially independent. She started paying down her credit card debt, following the 70-30th's philosophy when making purchases. She even applied it when she found a job she was unsure about, knowing that it had a 70% chance of success. As the years went by, Rachel made some mistakes along the way. She regretted a few decisions that didn't pan out, but she learned from them and adjusted her course. And in the end, her decision-making paid off. She was able to pay off her loans, save for a down payment on a house, and find love along the way. It wasn't always easy, but by following the advice in that final summary article, Rachel found her way to financial independence and a fulfilling life. Now, the insights and knowledge I gained from reading, buy this, not that, were phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Trust me, you won't regret it.